are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are. You are beautiful. 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 You are beautiful.
take a journey. We see your beauty. Yeah. Decide to step out of the limitations yeah. of your flesh. Hey. Come to the place where your spirit can engage. The more we see Love your beauty. This frequency is a signal the that is coming from heaven. Just like it's you. a signal coming from heaven. We can you lock it? Can you lock it? Can you lock it? Engage your spiritual tentacles and lock into what the Lord is delivering here. Shalabano. We see a beauty. Kabontelay. Kabalabarabano. We look to your face. Ripala cobre queso del candela kai. We see you beauty. We see you beauty. Spirit, we yield to your leading tonight. 
that which you have ordained to deliver unto us tonight, O oh God. We take the posture of willing servants, ready to receive. That as you pour out yourself upon us, may our vessels be able to carry that which you release. Upon the wings of the word that you have ordained to minister to us tonight, Holy Spirit, find free course in our hearts, in our souls, and in our spirits. Touch us. Bless us. Challenge us. Exalt us. By the time we are done, please take all the glory. For in Jesus' awesome name, we have worshipped. If you feel the need to take a seat, you can now. riches of his presence, the wonders of his grace, the reality of his glory, and some of the attractions that keep pulling us in our pursuit of him. For we realize that in the journey of our trying to find his fullness, we lose ourselves that's the beauty of the Christian walk. That yourself gets lost as you discover more of him. As you look upon him, you begin to see what you are not and what you should become. The revelation of him is the glory of the Christian journey. That's the reward. That is what we lay hold on to. That God is no longer hidden. He is fully seen. It is that place that all of us strives to come to. Because when you arrive at that destination, unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, unfortunately because it might sound sad to you, none of us will ever truly arrive there where he is known to us in all of his fullness. It's a destination you will only arrive at when you have been taken into glory. The gate into that place is the transition called death. That is when he will be revealed to you in all his fullness. But fortunately too, it is that pool that keeps us on the journey. It's that attraction that makes the pursuit worthwhile. That the more I stay on this path, I have hope that I will find another portion of him. So you hear men like David say that his mercies are new every morning. It's not the mercy to buy a car. It's the mercy of the fact that a portion of him can still be given to you. As long as you still have breath. As long as we continue to draw breath in this realm, we have the privilege to be able to touch something we didn't touch yesterday. That's what makes the Christian life beautiful. Even though God is immutable in the sense that he does not change, our understanding of who he is is, is, is limited, but there's the opportunity for it to increase on a daily basis. That is what keeps us on the journey. That I can come into something richer today that I didn't have yesterday. This is what he tried to model in the wilderness when he sent them manna. He said to them, take only the portion you can eat when? Today. You had to come and wake up every morning to regather. Regather. And if you, by any means, decided that you didn't want to follow that principle and you decided to gather manna today for tomorrow, you will come up to find the realization that the manna you gathered, you gathered yesterday warms and began to grow dairy. I saw a quote from my father in the Lord some days ago that stuck in my heart. He said, God did not call you to be revelatory. He called you to be fresh. Hmm. 
It's important because we are in a day and a time where everybody wants to sound revelatory. The thing is that in the multitude of revelation that pours out of your lips that lives are transformed. Men don't get transformed because they hear revelation. They get transformed because they come into a fresh experience with God. It is encounters that change men. Encounters. So that was the principle he was trying to model in the wilderness. That as a believer, you must seek freshness in your work with him. Freshness. This is why we go to prayer. This is why we engage in the disciplines of Bible study. We want to be sure that the words that are resting upon our spirits are the words that are proceeding out of his mouth. So you have the word of God, but you have what is called the proceeding word. That is the now world. That is what keeps you on the path of spiritual progress. If you find at any time that you are now tired of pursuing. Oh, it is because you have lost the, 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 the expectation of that reward. Of finding more of him. If you know that the reward of your pursuit is that he will unveil another portion of himself. You will stay on that journey. That's what keeps men like us in prayer. We know that if we stay long enough, there's something we're about to come into that we did not know previously. And that encounter has the ability to forge you into a mighty instrument in his hand. You know, while I sat in the office trying to run it through my spirit, what the Lord wants me to engage tonight. I was asking the Lord that when, oh when, when, oh Jesus, when? Will I become like the men I have read about in scriptures? When will I become like them? That's my own frustration in the Christian faith. That there are so many talkatives, but we don't have men like we have in scripture. Men like Daniel, who their prayer life had become so solid, their experience with God so rich, that when a problem came up, he said, don't worry, just give me time. Give me time. Let me just enter my prayer closet. If I enter there, he will speak to me. How did he have that kind of confidence? How were, how were such men made? How? I thought about it tonight in the office this afternoon. Men like Paul, who in the middle of a Bible study, somebody falls from the window and dies. And he just walks out. And he's, he has the ability, he has the stature within himself to be able to bring the person back to life. Men like Philip that, that stumbled into Samaria by accident. He didn't go there by divine arrangement. He, it was persecution upon the church that drove Philip into Samaria. So he, he, maybe his boss now broke down along the way and he found himself in Samaria and he said, let me just preach. It's not that he was preparing for a crusade. That he had fasted for 52 days because he had a crusade and had done 59 vigils. No. There was persecution in Jerusalem and only the apostles remained. Everybody else was scattered. And by hook or crook, Philip stumbled upon Samaria, opened his mouth to preach. And the Bible says demons came crying out of their own accord. Meaning that, if you understand that scripture, it's not that Philip laid his hand on anybody and said, come out. No. He says, of their own accord, by the instrument of the word on his tongue, demons could no longer stay in the vessels which they had possessed. They had made human beings their house, but a man of stature arrived. And just by the preaching of the word, he, the Bible says he preached unto them Jesus Christ in a cobra, and demons began to cry out. Nobody was shouting there, come out, come out. No, no, he just preached. The consequence of that preaching engagement is that the whole city of Samaria, the Bible says, was full of joy. Echo. One man came, one man entered into a city. By the time he was living, the whole city, the Bible says, was what? Full of joy. How did these men become like this? Because the burden upon my heart that the Lord said I should come and share with you is that we must become dispensers of spirit realities. We must become dispensers. That's what I mean when I say you must be able to take the weight of your engagements with God into your everyday life. 
You must begin to practice the things that you have been taught. I said to us last week that proof that you are mature is not the fact that you live above sin. Because you have people who are morally upright, but they don't know Jesus. Are you here? The man does not know Jesus, but he by principle knows that he does not sleep with another man's wife. He's morally upright, but that does not mean he has become things of the spirit. Are you here? Please tell them to put the gen back on, whoever did that. Should be morally upright. You don't need the Holy Spirit to be morally upright. Men live like that by principle. Doesn't change anything. But if you are growing in God, proof that you have grown in God is that the divine instructions you have received have become a part of your life. Are you here? And this is the burden we are trying to dispense in the remaining days of Bible study as we draw the year to a close. Healing. Everyone sitting here is supposed to be. Everybody sitting here should be a dispenser of healing. Everybody sitting here should be a dispenser of the Holy Spirit. Everybody should have the ability to bring people into the reality of the experience of the Holy Spirit. Everybody sitting here is supposed to be able to cast out devils. It's supposed to be a natural consequence of your engagements with the Lord. In studying the early church, you'll find that what they did deliberately, deliberately, was to bring men to a place where they lived in conscious obedience to the spirit and the word. So everybody in the early church was groomed to be spiritual. Everybody in the early church was groomed to be familiar with the word of God. Everybody. That's why Philip was able to go to Samaria and teach. There's a story, I think it's in the book of Acts chapter 18. Yes, Acts 18. You get to verse 24. It tells us a story about Apollos. Apollos, his own schooling was not even complete. But if you see the way the Bible describes him as eloquent, one who was familiar with scriptures, and yet all he knew was the baptism of John. In that Acts chapter 18, Aquila and Priscilla were just passing by. And they sat down, heard Apollos teach. By the time they listened to him for a while, they now decided, no, this man is not fully grounded. The Bible says they took him aside. Are you? Let's go to Acts 18. Let me show you something. Acts 18 verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. Are you seeing this description? He was eloquent and he was what? Mighty in the scriptures. Came to Ephesus. This man was instructed, meaning that he had gone through teaching. Teaching. He was instructed how? In the way of the Lord. So it means that there was, a, there was a system of instruction. Are you here? There was a system of instruction in the early church. And the goal of the instruction was to bring people into the knowledge of what? The way of the Lord. So everyone was supposed to be familiar with the way of the Lord. So Apollos came to Ephesus. It's just like you now traveling and you go to you go to Ugeli. He came to Ephesus and then he found an opportunity to begin to dispense what he had been taught. Are you here? Let's go further. And being fervent where? 
in the spirit. What does it mean to be fervent? Alive, burning. Last week we said, arise and do what? Burn. He is fervent in the spirit. He's alive. He's burning. He's consistent. He's one who is deep in the things of the spirit. Let's go further. And taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Meaning that he's schooling. He's schooling was not yet complete but he was already operating at this level his schooling was not yet complete but he was already operating at maximum level you don't know who Apollos is this is the same Apollos that almost divided the Corinthian church are you here when men began to say I am of Paul and some said I am of who Apollos that's the kind of man I'm talking about. It was after this engagement with Aquila and Priscilla that he gained such stature that men were willing to line up behind him. So when Aquila and Priscilla saw, they didn't mock him. They just called him aside and said, if you read further, they called him aside and said, ah, your education is not complete. Come, come, come. And what did they do? They began to teach him. Verse 26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and did what? Expounded unto him the way of God. How? More perfectly. More perfectly. You see, what I wanted to do today, we tried to get a board, but I couldn't get a board. I want us to break our lives into three compartments. Compartment one, you will write doctrine. Compartment two, you will write growth. Compartment three, you will write ministry. In compartment one, what we are dealing with on that doctrine is, what are your convictions? Are you familiar with what we call the articles of our belief system. Are you familiar? Because one of the ways you identify a mature man, a mature man, is that he does not hide his Christianity. He leaves his convictions. And when I'm saying hide his Christianity, I'm not talking about that anywhere. Enter, say, I'm a Christian. No, no. That's just one. That, that's even the that's even the kindergarten dimension of expressing your faith he does not hide the fact that he's a Christian he leaves his convictions what do I mean by he leaves his convictions what do I mean I mean that he doesn't just say the things he has been taught he leaves them so when he says that I believe in prayer the way you know he believes in prayer is that he does what he prays When he says, I have faith. He doesn't speak from a shallow understanding. Because the Nigerian church, all they know about faith is that faith is something they can use to get something from God. But you see, faith itself, faith itself is the body. First, one of the dimensions of faith is that faith is the body of what we believe in. Doctrine. And if your doctrine is wrong, just like this man, you may be eloquent and doing well, but you don't, you've not known the way of the Lord perfectly. You will not be effective. The other compartments of your life will suffer. Because in the compartment two, compartment number two that I said is we will call growth, where we are going to talk about building roots. Because you remember, last week we looked at that scripture where we said some did not understand so the first compartment has to do with understanding doctrine the second one was that they did not build roots so when the sun came it scorched them and they died that is growth then the last compartment he said those that received the word understood it built roots 
they were the ones that were able to do what? Bear fruit. That's ministry. By the time we get to that compartment, you will now begin to understand that ministry does not mean you must hold the microphone. By the time we get to that compartment, I'm trusting the Lord that a lot of us will begin to have encounters in the realm of the spirit because every one of us has a horn. A horn in the realm of the spirit. When we say horn, we are talking about the area that God has uniquely gifted you to excel in. You need to find it. So let's begin in compartment one. Doctrine, faith. Faith, first of all, is the article of our belief system. So when you hear somebody like Jude say that earnestly contend for the faith that was previously delivered unto you, he's not talking about the faith that you used to as a medium of exchange is talking about our belief system in the early church they had a council a council called the council of Nicaea Nicaea spelled N-I-C-E-A most of the time when there were disputes in the church they went to that council and that council will sit down and agree what to do does this thing align with scripture because the Bible is God's system for order. What did I say? For order. It's the boundary. This is why I get, I get tired of people who come on, on, on Facebook and are trying to show their level of spirituality by extra biblical things. Spectacular things. The Bible is not a book of mysticism. The Bible is not a book of spiritism. The Bible is a kingdom book revealing Jesus Christ. That is why the last book of the Bible is revelation, not revelations. Are you here? That book is not titled revelations. It's titled what? Revelation. Because it's one revelation. It's the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. The word I translated the revelation there is the Greek word apocalypse. It means to unveil. To disclose. To open up. So you had seen Jesus hidden in the Old Testament. Closed in the Old Testament. Manifest in the New Testament. And then glorified in the New Testament. In revelation, his glorified state is now shown. Revelation is not a mystical book. For instance, in Revelation, the true church, the true church, the nature of the true church is shown. How is it shown? The Bible calls the church a candlestick. Are you here? If somebody reads that book now and wants to now start coming up with mysterious things about what a candlestick means, no, 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 no. Revelations chapter 1, I think it's verse 20, clearly states. Now, this is the mystery of the seven stars and the seven candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Angelos, messenger, pastor of the seven churches. And the candlesticks are the seven churches. Meaning that the posture of the true church is a posture of a candlestick. A church is supposed to be burning. When you come in, your own candle must be lit. Like I said to you last week, it is God's responsibility to light your candle. It's God's responsibility to put you on a lampstand, but it's your responsibility to do what? To burn. Alright? So, the, when we talk about faith, we're talking about the articles of our belief system. What do you believe? What do you understand by divine healing? Because these things will affect your performance in the real world. You can never grow beyond your convictions. What has, what, what, what has been taught you over the years is the shape you will take in the realm of the spirit. So when you look at the form of any believer in the realm of the spirit, what you see is a product of what the person has been taught. 
your form, your shape in the realm of the spirit is a product of what you have been taught. This is why you must take that compartment of your life very serious. Even Jesus, he recommended, he said, be careful how you hear. Be very careful how you hear. Because once you have heard it, you have received it, you have believed it, it dictates your life. You can't grow beyond it. So you have the articles of our belief system. What do you believe about holiness? What do you believe about salvation? What do you believe about redemption? What do you believe about sin? Somebody is, is, is advancing the theory that sin is dead. Sin is dead. So the question I normally ask is, so what people are doing, what do we call it? What do we call it? If sin is dead, as we are saying, what do we call the things that are happening? If it's not sin. Now, if you receive that teaching, it will affect your performance. This is why your body of doctrine must be pure. Notice in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that they continued how? In the apostles' doctrine. It's on the basis of that scripture that they came up with what is called the apostles' creed. Are you here? So, much, so many of us who grew up in orthodox churches will be familiar with the apostles' creed. Apostles' creed does not mean it's the apostles that wrote it. Eh? What that thing meant was they took the teachings that the apostles had handed over over the years and they formed a body of belief. The word creed there is from the Latin word credo which means belief. So the Apostles' Creed where it says, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in the Holy Ghost and all of that and all of that. Some, some even include the phrase, I believe in the Catholic Church. Are you here? So, they continued in the Apostles' Doctrine. What they tried to do was to maintain the purity of the teachings. Because once doctrine is corrupted, what you give birth to cannot be perform the person cannot produce spirit life one scripture I want to sit in your spirit as we do these teachings is Mark 16 where it says 15 as many go out preach the gospel the many that believe baptize those that believe and are baptized shall be saved and these signs shall accompany them that believe these signs shall accompany them that believe. In my name, they will do what? Cast out devils. They shall do what? Are you in church? They shall do what? That means if you are not speaking in tongues. So if somebody is telling you that speaking in tongues is wrong theology. Should I go there? Okay. If somebody tells you that speaking in tongues is wrong theology that uh, on the day that people were baptized that what happened was that they spoke in in diverse tongues in people's languages that people that were around heard them you've read that do you know that it's not everybody that was around that heard what they were saying they spoke in various languages but there were certain things they spoke that people did not hear you don't believe Acts chapter 2 Can we begin at uh, verse 4? Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit did what? Pause. Let me do something before we go further. 
If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit here, eh? John chapter 7, 37, 38. We will come back there when I teach prayer. Because when we come to the next compartment, I'm going to do practical things. We'll get people baptized. We will do healing. I'll tell you to pray for this. Is anybody sick here? You came with pain in your body. Pain. Anybody? Headache? Waist pain? Anybody sick? Fever? Okay. Somebody will pray for you. We, we will do practical. Practical before we go. Alright. John 7. Jesus stood up and said, If any man believes on me, as the scriptures have said, 37, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Okay. Now, before that he said, if any man tests, let him come and drink. Now when you read that scripture, what do you think? That is the way you drink water with a cup. You come to Jesus and you drink. No, it's something that your spirit imbibes. It's a spirit engagement. Your spirit imbibes something from Jesus Christ. And then you are now empowered to dispense it. Now, when you meet somebody that is not baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is a key thing. He says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Who did the filling? Who did the filling, huh? God released the Holy Ghost. I would have shown you theologically, Jesus is called the baptizer. He's the one that baptizes men in the Holy Ghost. When John was introducing him, he said, I baptize you with water, but the one coming after me shall baptize you how? With Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. So Jesus is the baptizer. So what happened is Jesus released the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When you pray for somebody to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need to let the person know that the feeling will come from above. The speaking will come by their faith. Are you here? They are the ones that will open their mouth and speak. Most of the time when you are praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit, they are standing there waiting for something spectacular. They want to feel fire. Shh. Uh -uh. It's not spectacular. Are you here? So you need to let the person know that don't wait for, don't wait for kiss. Are you feeling anything? Don't ask whether they are feeling anything. Let them know they were filled with the Holy Ghost and it is they that began. They began. So the person has to open his mouth. How? By faith. Are you here? We will get there. I will show you in 1 Corinthians that speaking in new tongues is a mystery. You are not expected to understand what you are saying. Are you here? You are not expected. That is why we have a gift called the interpretation of tongues. You are not expected to understand what you are saying. Your mind, your understanding will be unfruitful unproductive your mind is useless it cuts off your mind all right it's just like me when i want to speak with robo do i need to do <sighs> i don't need drama even though my robo is uh, is suicidal when i venture into those places there's no grace there no grace <laughs> I need, to, I need to go to a school of instruction. Instruction. No grace there. And, but I don't need to do like this. It just comes how? Naturally. Some of you that are sitting here, you did not sit down one day and say, teach me Urobo. Eh? Are there people like that? You didn't sit down one day and go through a school of learning, of learning. You just found out that you were picking words, picking words, picking words. And when you opened your mouth, you just spoke. Is the same thing. So sometimes, because people are waiting for something spectacular, they never receive. They never, you don't need to fall down to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You don't need to break any chair. Chair is expensive. You don't need to fall down anywhere. You don't need to roll to receive the Holy Spirit. Why? The question is why? He's already on your inside. Are you here? 
when you get born again you already have a deposit of the holy spirit how do i know the book of john chapter 3 he said as many as are born of the spirit are spirit you have him but you now know, need to know how to release him are we together we'll come back there next verse and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Next verse. Now when this was not abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Next verse. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these we speak Galileans? Next verse. And how we hear every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pam Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in parts of Lib Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Next verse. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Next verse. Others. Are you here? The Bible says, What? Others, mocking, said, These men are what? Full of new man. Meaning that they could not understand. Are you here? What does it mean when he says, these men are full of new wine? Let's pause. It means, you know when you are, you are, you are drunk, when you are drunk, eh? you can say foolish things. It means that things these people were saying and the way they were behaving was strange. While others were hearing their language and saying, Kai, what does this mean? Some others were now saying, ah, these people are drunk. If, if you see somebody speaking your language with the first thing you will say, you are drunk. Are you here? You just see somebody, somebody, somebody just that cannot speak Robo, start speaking Robo. You now say, Star, this is Star, this is Gouda. Eh? No, it's because they could not understand. It was sounding like rubbish to them. They did not hear their own language. Are you here? They didn't. And another dimension of that verse is this. Somebody speaking in tongues. You just see somebody speaking Egyptian. You now say the person is drunk. It means there must have been something about that behavior that was strange. I've heard people say that when the Holy Ghost comes, you don't have to fall. You don't have to. The fact that I say chairs are expensive. If the Holy Ghost, sometimes when the Holy Spirit hits your vessel, you can't contain it. You can't contain it. There must have been a way they were acting when the Holy Spirit dropped upon them that he said, Kai, normal beings, human beings don't act like this. This is wine. Have you seen a drunk man before? Oh my. My matric day, I drank and drank until there was no more beer to, to sell to me. I, 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 my brand used to be Star Lager. Star. Oh my. When I buy Star in those days and, I, and they open it and I see the golden blocks, I say, oh glory. <laughs> oh, you don't know. Jesus. My brand used to be Star Lager. That matric night, I drank all the Star in the bar. They didn't have Star again. They said, I said, wait in there. They said, Legend. I said, bring Legend. Bring Legend. I drank all the Legend. Then I, they said, Legend of fish. I said, bring Small Star. Small Star. Then on my way home, we got to the middle of the road. I said, Kai, I won't sleep. I won't sleep. <laughs> My friends with me, I said, we never reach house. I said, Kai, the, the, the bed soft. It's soft. It's soft. <laughs> in, in the middle of the road. If my friends were not there, I would have slept there since the morning. That's how wine, wine. That's what it does. So those guys could not have been arranged and acting all coordinated. And then they say, 
this must be one. There must have been some, some movement. So people who tell you that where the Holy Spirit is moving, it has to be quiet. They don't know the Holy Ghost. When it came upon them, the second baptism, the Bible says the whole foundation of the house was shaken. Shaken. The minute he broke out of the realm of God and came upon men, there was a, a shake. So what is your understanding of speaking in tongues? You will never receive that gift. You will never receive that baptism if you don't settle it first in your heart. That is for all of us. They all speak with new tongues. I can show you in Acts 19 when Apollos went, went, went I think he had come to Ephesus now. and then, No, he was in Achaia. And Paul came and met him. When Paul met him in Acts chapter 19, Paul began to minister. And then the Bible says he laid hands upon people and they received the Holy Spirit. I can show you in scriptures that receiving the Holy Spirit is various ways. We can be teaching now and the Holy Spirit falls upon people. When BIU, some days, I mean, um, um, University of Benin, in, as I was about to wrap up the meeting, the Holy Spirit broke out. And people, a, a sister started screaming by herself. That, that's, that, you, don't, you don't have control over that one. That one is the Holy Spirit doing what? Breaking out. Breaking up. But there are some times that it will require laying on of hands so that there can be a transference from you to the person. Are you here? So in the market, my sister, in the market, you can get somebody filled. In the market. You get somebody born again. You don't need to wait till next week. You get somebody born again and you say, Would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? Person say yes. Say, Do you know him? Now that you are born again, he's there. But he can manifest with what is called an unknown tongue. Person say, ah, I would like to receive. He say, okay, let's pray now. Then you pray. You notice that the Holy Spirit does not drop. Make contact. People who have done this thing with me before know that I will call you out and say, put your hand on their belly. What am I trying to do? Out of the belly. It's scripture. I'm not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not native doctor. Eh? in scripture the bible says out of where the belly so i say put your hand there activate it let there be a stirring in the spirit and most of the time joshua has, has done it there are some people uh, there's a sister that used to be with us she has god has moved through their hands even people i don't know i call them from congregation can you speak in tongues yes my wife call them okay lay your hands as you are praying in tongues there'll be a stirring and the person begins to speak but everything must happen by faith. Are you here? The journey of the Christian life, write this one down. The journey of the Christian life is a journey of faith. You will not receive anything from God without faith. You will not become anything in God without faith. It's a journey of faith. So you have the articles of our belief system, which is our faith, the compendium of our faith, what we believe. We can do that teaching for one year. So what I'm going to say to you is this. Because we'll be having sessions of questions and answers. I'm going to give at least 10 minutes before I close so we can ask questions. Now, if there's an area of our faith that is troubling you that you are confused about. Because if I decide to pick them one after the other, it's a one-year course. Because if I start teaching redemption now, redemption now, I can teach that for three weeks. Okay, so if there's an area of our faith that is troubling you, Pastor, I don't understand this thing. Why is this thing like this? Write it down. Okay, by next week we'll begin with questions. So come on time. Then I will now expand on that area. We'll look at it scripture, 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 and then we'll be able to answer questions. So the other dimension of faith is what Hebrews chapter 11 tries to teach. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Where it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the ancients, King James says, the elders, obtained a good report. Everything you will receive in the Christian life is by what? Faith. And what is faith? Faith is simply belief and trust that is displayed by obedience belief 
and trust that is displayed how? Obedience. For instance, many of us quote this scripture. Philippians 4, I think it's verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Bishop, give me that scripture. I think it's Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. Okay, the King James says careful. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be do, done what? The proof that you have faith is something called rest. Are you here? The proof of faith is what? If I ask you these questions next week, you don't have the answer, I won't continue the teaching. We will just pray two hours. The prayer point will be simple. Oh Lord, revive me again. Two hours. That will be the punishment. Are we together? The proof of faith is what? Rest. That means, if I say I have belief, what does my belief rest on? The promises of God. We are the promises of God. They are in the book of order. What is the book of order? The Bible. Are you here? Then, there is belief, and then there is the other part of faith. is trust. For instance, when you came to church this evening, and I said, if you feel like sitting down, sit down. I didn't see any one of you carry the chair and do like this. This chair go feel hold my weight so. I didn't see you do like this. Eh? All of you just did what? That's trust. It's something you leave. Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer, and supplication and thanksgiving make your request what known to God go to the next verse and the peace of God are you here now when you do this thing what you get is not answer is what peace are you here so the, the thing the feedback by this act Activity. It's not that you have made your request. Oh God, I don't get money to pay school fees. Then somebody comes and knocks on your door. That can happen. But the first feedback from heaven when you make this your living reality is what? Peace. Rest. Are you here? But the average believer eh, pretends like he has faith. And the first thing that happens to him when he has a problem is not, is not that he thinks of making his request known to God. It's anxiety. Hey! Kai, how go take up now? Hey! Say, your father is sick, your father. Oh God, why? Why me now? Why me? I thought that if I do your work, you will do my oh God. God of my father. You are you are you are you are you are, you are lost, lost. He says, be go to the previous verse. Be anxious for nothing. That means whenever you face a challenge. It should become a natural response to make it known to who? To God. And it does not leave us guessing how we should make it known. He says, by prayer. If this was modern English, after that you have semicolon. Because supplication is prayer. Thanksgiving is prayer. When we come into the second compartment and I teach prayer, we will now see the difference between supplication, which is also called petition, intercession, thanksgiving, the various forms of prayer. Worship is prayer. This is why when we sing songs in our tribe, we're not trying to get excited. We're not, we're not singing. You see, like, like this evening now, we're not shouting. Eh? If you are the type that is emotional, you want you want you want you want the drums, the cymbals, you you can't you can't worship because as we are singing, our hearts, our spirits are praying. It's a cry. It's a cry. Like there's been a prayer in my in my spirit. I had to go and download the song. 
maybe some of you don't will not know that song. You, you, you may not, you will not know it. Women of faith. I will bow to you, to no other God, but you alone. Some people were not born when they did that song, right? That song is almost 15, 20 years. I know you, you won't know it. But that, that it was, I think Maro, that's why you met me playing. It was on repeat. I had to go online and say, where is this prayer coming from? It, it was born in here. We don't worship because we are trying to, we are trying to create something emotional. The words of our worship are the cries of our prayer. The things they call Psalms were David's intimate prayers. Intimate prayers. When he has finished praying it, he will now write it for the chief musician. Then he sits down to hear them. His, his prayer ascend like a song. So it's a, his prayer. It's why when we sing, we're not, we're not after whether the song is sweet. I will lay down my idols. Thrones I have made All that has captured my heart And I call I will bow to you To no other God But you alone It is it's a cry in my heart So it's, it's, it's the, the medium of exchange in the realm of the spirit is faith. It's the currency you spend to be able to touch immortal things. Faith. By it. It there means faith. Trust and belief. By trust and belief, the elders, the ancients obtained a good report. That means when your report card is written, anything not done by faith, the Bible calls it what? Sin. Are you here? Because it is by it that you obtain what? A good report. In talking about faith, you also have what is called the gift of faith. Not every one of us can operate in the gift of faith. Why? Because it's a gift. Before these teachings are over by December, some of you will begin to find out that there is a gift on your life. But you don't know. There are things the Holy Spirit has given unto you. And the thing about gifts is that where there is absence of use, the gift can lie dormant till you die. And the essence of the gift is that you might be able to profit. When you begin to burn, when you begin to burn, when that gift has found full expression in your life, it will bring you what? Profit. Men around you will profit. How I know that you believe that scripture? Be careful for nothing. It's when they tell you your father is sick, say, don't worry. Okay, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. That's what Jesus displayed in John chapter 11. They told him, Lazarus is sick. First time I saw that scripture, I said, what kind what kind of person is this Jesus? In fact, they wrote it there so that you will know. He said, the one whom thou loved. Hmm. Not loved. <laughs> the one whom thou lovest. He sick. I expected that Jesus will leave everything he was doing and start running to Lazarus. But the Bible says that love made him to stay for three days. Hmm. He wanted to make sure that anxiety had turned to the sound of many waters. Peace. When you pray about something, how I know that you believe the prayer you have prayed is that there will be peace. Oh God, I need money. Then you are, you are, you are checking your, your, your contact. Who oh, are going to call now? I see the old Jerry 
5k I'm not going to call now Lord send me help send me help I know you sent ravens to Elijah Kabo Kabo Say man try Joshua Joshua Say Kai Joshua gave me 2k at the tent on Tuesday I can't ask him again Hey boo to boo any demon of poverty die hey, you, are, you are thinking of who to call let me call pastor He said, when you, you have made your request known unto him, what does he release? Peace. That do it what? Pastor. You can't explain it. That's what it means. It is foolishness to be at peace like that. It, it, you know why it passes all understanding? Because the situation might not have changed. You don't understand what I'm saying. The reality of the situation is still the same, but you are at what? So when they see you, they say you are a madman. No, it's a peace that what? Pass it all of this time. So faith is in your obedience. It's not intellectual. It's not emotional. I receive it. When you say you receive it, then what happened when you left church? What happened? I won't forget the, the healing service we did here one, one Sunday evening that we had sweet incense. We didn't take testimonies. We didn't take testimonies. But my friend's wife, he's, he's in France now. He, he has traveled abroad. He was here for the meeting, Pastor Deji. He was here with his wife. She had been having pain in her knees. Can't remember how long they said now, years or something. Can't remember. As we're praying, she said she just received, she just told herself. No, I received this healing. She got home, the pain was gone. For years. You cannot say that you are operating by faith and yet you are still engaging by your flesh. If it is faith, make your request known unto him and then you obey. Live in obedience. That's how we live. That's how we live. That's how my family lives. I had my last money and God says give to that person my obedience is proof that I trust him are you here when you can't obey it means that your trust is lip service your obedience is what proof that you trust him so I'm not afraid sometimes they just pay me salary 29th by the fifth, I'm in red. Pure red. The, the kind of red. Self. If the bank could call me and say, Ah, what did happen? They would not call me. Say, the money just enter. It, uh, uh. They would have called me and say, Calm down, calm down. The way my money goes, <laughs> is as if somebody is stealing it. Shua, 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 shua. <laughs> God bless me. Oh, bless your son, please. Ah, yeah. You just be fine. Shua, shua, shua. Shoo, shoo. Then the next, the next day after salary, I look at the account. It's zero. Then I need that and I say, Thank you, Lord. I say, Lord, how we are going to buy fuel? How we are going to survive? Then I go and preach somewhere. They put envelope in the bag. Then Joshua will come and tell me, There's an envelope. <laughs> because he knows that I don't I, I follow instructions to collect to collect uh, uh, what do we call it now? Honorarium. So he will tell me, there's envelope. Then maybe I don't want to say, glory, the Lord will say. Fire. Jesus. Then I come home, I'm going to buy fuel. I don't know. But that's how I survive. Day in, day out. I thought that maybe, I will be telling myself that, maybe when my salary becomes this amount, I will not have extra. God will bring something to take the extra. So life for me is even by faith. I live life by faith. These are things you must learn by experience. Don't do lip service. When you talk about faith, let it be out of the bowels of your personal engagement with God. Sometimes my mechanic, after working on my car, there's no money to pay him. 
So I got the tea now like this. I said, buy him, buy him. Then when he finishes, he's calling me. I got the transfer as I'm coming. <laughs> At that time now, I'm now, I'm now trusting the Lord for a breakthrough. Breakthrough. But the proof that I trust him is that I will not sit down in the night and then be eating the bread of sorrows. I will not sit down and be saying, All this preaching I'm doing in the tent. Jesus. You are doing me like this. Me. What will the people say? The people can say anything. My job is to do what? Make my requests. No. It's important, especially for us, us in, this, in this stream, in this tribe, to come to a knowledge of balance. Because when you hear people like me say, burden, 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 you now think that you should not pray for yourself at all. No. Eh? There's a place for praying for yourself. There's a place for intercession. There's a place for petition and supplication. Do you understand? Although, don't use me as case study. <laughs> don't, don't use me as case study because my own life is different. But there's a place for my sons are laughing because they, they Godwin doesn't like coming to see me because he says we just see me is burning, burning, burning. <laughs> the person not go eat again, burning, burning. <laughs> yes, well. So when we start when we start dealing with prayer, we will now engage petition, supplication, intercession. How thanksgiving can be a prayer. Remember when Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus, what did he do first? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. So as he stood there, he said, Father, thank you for I know you hear me always. He gave thanks. So sometimes when you, when you can't pray, especially, when, you know, I don't kid you. I'm giving you practical examples because this is how I live. This is how I live. There are times when prayer for me is painful. Painful. I'm sure my wife has heard me sometimes in the night crying. But the thing, the crying will not be from a place of despair. It will never be from a place of hopelessness. I will, I will engage because this thing for me is a living reality. Help me tonight, Lord. You see, as long as you still have options, where we are going to, you can't arrive there. Like men like Daniel. No options. It's a madman that they will tell that if you, if you pray again, we're going to kill you. He doesn't only pray. He opens the window down. It's madmen that live like that. Bro, God would not have killed him eh, if he came to the Lord in the afternoon and said, Father, you know there's a decree. I used to open my window before. Let me close it. It's him that is joined to the living that still has hope. Wisdom. Profitable to direct. God will not have killed him. He would have quietly closed his window and continued praying. Hey, but they were trying to kill a man who had already died. So he opened the window down and the Bible says, as usual. When I teach growth, eh, there are three words I want to leave in your spirit. Routine, deliberate, consistent. That is the juice for building roots. I will show you. Routine, deliberate, consistent when we get there we will, not, we will be talking we will, this is this is engagement he opened his window as usual knelt down lifted up his eyes and prayed do you know how many times he would have thought of that thing from the courts because you know daniel was elevated to the courts so he was walking in the very courts of the king that trek from the courts to his room to his prayer place do you know how many times he would have weighed his options how many times 
you would have thought about it. Do I skip to prayer time? Lord, I'm not ready to die now. But a man you have already castrated, what else? What else? What I'm trying to tell you is that these things we say must become part of our lives. You say you have faith in God, prove it. Live it. Daily, live it. Live it daily. You hear bad news? Yes, you are human. I don't take it that. Oh, when the car broke down, Joshua would have seen that I sat down. I was still. It's not as if I was gentle. My heart was broken. It was not humility. My heart was bleeding. Where am I going to get 270,000 to fix the car? I had not paid school fees. My children's school fees is, is almost 500k. Well, I just calculated it in my mind. One million in three days. Where am I going to get it? So I sat down there and I was still, still. But what I didn't allow was anxiety. Because what peace does is that peace opens the realm of the spirit. Anxiety opens the gate of darkness. So the one you engage will determine what will flow in your direction. So I call you to an order. There's a way we need to live. You see, let it begin to tell on you, on your life. You come home, there's no food in the cool bar. Sit down and give him glory. I know these things are hard. And I'm not saying it to you as one who has not lived it. I've lived this thing. My wife is there. We got married sitting on the floor. No bed. No gen on the floor. You come to my house and my wife cooks food for you. No tray to put it. We you sit on the floor with us like Chinese. There were times that people stood at my doorway and looked at the whole house bare, nothing inside. So where we go sit down now? You don't see where I sit down. Sit down where I sit down. This, this, oh, let me leave that. My dad visited my house and he saw that nothing in the house. And then he said, ah, I should buy you a television. The TV that I had, married man, who forced me to marry? The TV I had, I needed my father to give me TV. They now put TV. The house now took one kind of. You know, TV used to give. Oh, no, man. <laughs> TV colors the destiny of a parlor. It just. People will now enter the house and see TV and say, Kai, the guy get LED TV. We're only managing. It took God four, five months. They called 16 of us for an interview in Wellington Hotel. Me, I heard about the interview by mistake. Yeah, I submitted CV. The people interviewing had already planned who they were going to take. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't make plans for a man who knew how to work with God. Everybody on the interview panel had their candidates there. They invited their candidates. They just say, okay, Adam, I came last minute, number 16. In Wellington. Then they served us lunch. The interview was 8 a.m. to 5. You first write test. When you finish test, you now do face-to-face -face interview. So after the test, they called us into the, the, the restaurant to come and eat buffet. While people were tearing chicken lap, I sat and I was just praying in the spirit. Show below more kopo. Jesus. When you enter into that kind of realm, you're talking. Oh, you don't know. He's browsing. That one is browsing. You are looking for. You are looking for the IP address of heaven. Then when you latch in, you just you say, Kabe, Kume, Kuba. Then you are now seeing what the Lord said. Oh, you surely you shall be the head. And, and they are tearing chicken lap. You are tearing scriptures. Le, Kume, Kube, Shadow. One guy there was saying that, 
I don't know whether I go pass, so at least if not only the lunch for Wellington, they give me. I take her. Me, I, di I didn't come for lunch. I am tired of sitting on the ground. I knew that this was my breakthrough. So when we finished lunch, they now began to call us for interview. I entered. I sat down. Asked one question. Asked two questions. Asked three questions. I went to sleep. They called me from Escravos. They were fighting there. Fighting. Everybody wanted their candidate. They were fighting there. Fighting back and front. The white man now stood up and said, this one. He's the one that performed best in the interview. Bring him. The man that had a candidate, he never liked me till I left the job. Because he had prepared his friend to take the position. HSC manager. When he called me, he was sounding angry. Oh! But I was still. He no more Koba. That job, I didn't stay there for more than three months. I resigned by myself and went to a job in, in Port Harcourt. Leave this thing. Your family members will know you have touched God. When you begin to leave it, you begin to leave it. You begin to leave it. I close so that we take some questions before I go. You know her her Horatius Parfor. Horatius Parfor. A fantastic hymn writer. The Bible says, I mean the story says that. He lost his wife and his children. I mean his children, all his girls. All his girls in a, in a boat accident. They died at sea. Horatius Parfum. They all died at sea. Before then, the fires, I think of Chicago, had burnt his entire business. He was a millionaire. But those fires had ruined him. He had become poor. Poor. And then again, he escorted his wife. They were going somewhere. He escorted them to the boat. They entered. And then there was an accident at sea. And all his daughters died. And his wife, from where she was, she sent what is called a telegram. I alone am saved. The thing that shocks me about that story every time I read it is, Horatio Spafford sat down. Did he start complaining that, eh, God, you just took my business. Why take my children? When peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Just, just be like Horatio's path for tonight. It is well. I have faith. I believe him. I trust him. He that has begun a good work in me is able to complete it. Supplication. 
Passion and Thanksgiving. Maybe you feel like your mates have left you behind. I used to feel like that many years ago. I'm not gifted. Men are more intelligent than myself. I, 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 Lord, how am I ever going to make it?
passeth all understanding. God is sending it to someone. Your heart is coming to the place of rest. Your heart is coming to the place of rest. We bow before Healing streams of God are flowing. Waters of healing. They are flowing. They are flowing. Your mind, your body, your heart is being healed. Right now. Right now. Right now. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Ah. With your love, Jesus, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. With your
over that sick person, we say Jesus. Over that broken heart, we say Jesus. Over that financial situation, we say Jesus. Over that marriage, we say Jesus. Over that academic life, we say Jesus. Over that family going through a tough time, we say Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Lord, we believe you. We trust you. With everything that we have, we trust you. 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 We know when you are done with our lives, it will be beautiful. We, we trust you. We trust you. It seems so hard now. It seems so hard. So hard. But we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. There are many that have laughed at us. Yeah. There are many that have written us off. They say we are wasting our lives, but we trust you. You make the darkness tremble. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. You silent Jesus, Jesus. We trust you. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we live tonight with this confidence. The Bible says, whatever is committed into your hand, you are able to keep, even unto the coming of Jesus Christ. We put our lives in your hand. And we trust you to keep us. Lord, I do not take it for granted that there are people here tonight who are going through the darkest seasons of their lives. But they've raised their head above the waters. And they've looked at you. Fear has been silenced. Anxiety has been swallowed up. Thank you for restoring hope. Thank you for restoring strength. Thank you for confidence. We know that these dark seasons that certain people are going through, it will pass. We know it will pass. We know it will pass. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We are grateful tonight. For in Jesus' awesome name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Please, if you came with an offering, you can bring your offering now. If you came with an offering, you can bring your offering now. I said we're going to take questions. We are way behind time. So please, if you have a question, write it in your notes quickly. Write it in your notes so you don't forget it. Write it in your note. Please, Joshua, remind me when we come next week that we must begin with questions. Please. Uh, 